Marco. Marco. Let's go. Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. It's all about residual income. Obama. Yes, yes. Funny how life goes, isn't it, friends? Funny how life goes. Literally, as I'm about to hit start streaming, my niece texts me. We're playing Roblox. Play with us. Call me if you can play. I just started. I said, sorry, mommy is streaming now. How much longer with five question marks? And I said, I just started. It's okay. I played with them the other night. Just so you know that I'm not a, uh, a deadbeat, uh, a deadbeat uncle. I did play Roblox with my nieces the other night and we had a grand old time. So that's good. So, so I'm not going to hell. That's good. Well, look who else, look who's on time. Look who's on time. Uh, presumably, presumably the audio should sound good. I, I did some troubleshooting things. Presumably there should be no lag. Presumably, presumably everything should be blessed. Presumably there's 62 people watching and everybody click thumbs up on the ting, right? Thumbs up the ting. Presumably, I pinned the Streamlabs link in the chat as the pinned comment so that you know the easiest way to donate if you want to support the boy because, you know, I don't take sponsors on this channel because I uh, want to keep a high level of integrity on the channel and I don't want to whore my viewers out to watching uh, some Raid Shadow Legends ad. No disrespect to Raid Shadow Legends, but, you know, I would rather keep the content good and not have an, a 60-second interruption in the minute of a very compelling investigation um, for you to learn about, you know, NordVPN. Also, the risk is also that my video that I get paid for a sponsorship for gets taken down by some lawsuit or something or some copyright complaint from an MLM and then uh, the company doesn't want to pay me the money. Or even worse, you know, it could happen like what happened with uh, so many influencers that promoted things like established titles, BetterHelp, uh, what's the other one, FTX. All of them, which turned out to be either like somewhat unethical or just like an outright scam. You definitely don't want to be, uh, my niece just texted me, bruh, in all caps. You don't want to be one of those uh, creators that was getting paid to promote something shamelessly. And then uh, when everything hit the fan, they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't know, you know. So I would rather keep this channel completely uh, community funded and, and let you guys be in charge of the, you know, the game, then, then let some company dictate, you know, how many conversions I have to sell for literally for Raid Shadow Legends. So, um, that's good. And you know, YouTube takes 30% of them super chats. So Streamlabs link is in the chat. Bless. I saw somebody in the, in the discord. I saw, I saw somebody in the discord talking that big smoke about how they're feeling like dropping a bag. And if that doesn't happen, what you were about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. You know where we'll be. Uh, also, I want to say, you might have noticed the dono goal has changed from the two thousand dollar fly to fly to the MLM conference uh, beginning of May. It's in Washington D.C. I was there last year. I have a video on my channel called "I Confronted the FTC About Pyramid Schemes." I've been invited back. Shockingly, I've been invited back. Um, this year to speak again and long story short I'm not going to be able to go in person long story short I'm not going to be able to go in person I initially thought that I would have to be back in Canada I can't say too much about this I initially thought that I would have to be back in Canada prior to this conference happening and then I could just fly from Canada to Washington DC but as it's turned out, I have not flown back to Canada. I am still in another part of the world that, that nobody really knows where I'm at. At least the public doesn't know. My family knows, but you get me. Um, so I am still in this part of the world because, you know, it's complicated. You meet a girl named Erica. She's in her prime. You end up having a, 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 a very passionate and primal romance. And then you try to do a long distance relationship while you're in another part of the world and she's still primarily in America. So it's very difficult, you know, to, to try to juggle all of these, uh, these dynamics, you know. So uh, basically, I'm still in another part of the world right now. And for me to fly from where I am, 
like you truly don't comprehend how far away I am. For me to travel from where I am and then go, I would have to go through Canada and then I'd have to go through North America, right? Through Canada to the US, from the West Coast to the East Coast and beyond. Um, and I was just like plotting the multi-flight trip into Google Maps. And if I factor in like getting a hotel when I'm there and buying my food and whatever while I'm there, easily I'm easily it's going to cost me, ready? $10,000. Wrong button. That was the button I meant to press. So not good. So I decided why I decided a even if I had the $10,000 to blow, I wouldn't spend it on that when I have the option to appear virtually. So I'm going to be still speaking at this conference, but I'm going to be appearing virtually um, and uh, dealing with it like that. Let me see if I can make myself a little less bright there. Wow, that was better. Actually, that is better. So that's that's what that's what I go on right now. That's what I go on with the uh, with the conference situation. So instead, I have changed the dono goal because there is an MLM corporate base where I am. Okay, that I intend on infiltrating. I've already actually done part of the infiltration. Don't tell anyone because the last time I announced an infiltration ahead of me doing it, the company already started sending me cease and desist letters before the video even came out. Yay. So I've already started this infiltration, but I don't have any of my spy gear with me. I only have my phone. I don't have my spy pen. So I met this one guy that was telling me about the, what are the, the meta glasses or I don't know what the company is that makes them, but yeah, the, the spy glasses and dude, I looked up some videos. The quality on these things is insane. So that's the dono goal for today is I'm trying to get these glasses uh, so that I can do this fucking hell, do this infiltration. Also, I feel right. Also, the anti pyramid shirt, alwaysmarcomerch.com. You already know Wagwan. Use the code Goons for a discount. Oh, what's this? He also has a mug, the Always Marco anti pyramid mug from alwaysmarcomerch.com. Oh, use code Goons. Maybe buy both. Maybe buy both in a bundle and and you know slide yourself that discount okay um this stream will be interesting e1c1 in the chat what up what up to all my goons in the chat yes this is live meek jared all my mods x gonzalez look at all the the members trey tino devin kelly you already know what going on. glenn mlm is fraud commented and said i showed this same video that we're about to watch to my father he called me negative and stormed off he then blocked my number for a month this is the best show that Dateline NBC has ever made. Normally, legacy media ignore MLM. Yes, so true, so true. So we're going to be watching and reacting to, which I have actually, I don't think I've ever seen this in its full entirety, either. Way, by the way. Dateline documentary, Amway Quickstar, Worldwide Dream Builders, uploaded to this channel, Brandon McCartney. Shout out Brandon McCartney for posting this. And uh, yes, it's the quality isn't stupendous, 240p, yo! But uh, we're gonna get through it together and I'm gonna be here to to guide your sweet little eyeballs through the process of watching this video because I know, you know, I don't want our TikTok brains to uh, to melt trying to keep up with this. So I will I will make the, the sacrifice that only a leader can make and um, help guide us through this, through this process here. So let me get it sorted. Let me get it sorted like this. Can't believe you've done this. All right. Wow, it looks great, actually. Actually, looks great. Looks lovely. Looks lovely. I love those memes where it's like the cruelest thing that British people do is they make their kids do the accent all day. <laughs> so foolish. So foolish. Can't can't believe you've done this. All right, here we go. So. I actually wanted to check out your comments first because I don't want to ignore my goons. Um, do you like me? Says Benjamin. Do you like me? <laughs> That's haram. That's haram. Okay, let's see. 
Thumbs up the ting, by the way. I don't know what is going on. Thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. There is. I'm going to refresh it right now and see. I'm going to be disappointed, aren't I? Only 62 likes despite there being 100 people watching. Yay. Treacherous. Treacherous. Um, Ryan McDonald, thank you for the super chat. He says, bro, I work in commercial insurance and it's a great industry. Sucks that MLM ruined the entire industry's reputation. Love the content, bro. Yes, thank you. MLM infamously disguises itself as legitimate insurance as often as it can. And it's a lie. Woohoo! Yay! Companies lying to steal from poor uh, Mexican and Arab and Indian and black people so that they can uh, trick them into thinking that they're getting the American dream, but really they're just people cannibalizing their own communities so that they can fatten their own pockets and most of them don't even end up getting that result. They're just doing it to make the one guy at the very top rich. Yay! Thank you again for that. Uh... Oh, thank you, Sev. Sev donated 680, and what do he say? Sev says, remember to donate on Streamlabs, my goons. Marco needs that extra 27%. You already done know. Is it 27%? I thought it was 30% that YouTube takes. But hey, we're on a floating rock flying through space. Glenn says, shortly after this show went to Amway, went to air, Amway went back to back, Amway went back to calling themselves Amway and dumped the A2K and Quickstar names. Well, of course, that's what these scams do. They just redisguise themselves with a new mask. Sam here, Wagwa in general. You already done know. Oh, where's the, I, I, I don't have the, I don't have the island audio for some reason. I need to get that island song back. What was even that song? Okay. The ting looking awfully not thumbs up, I know. Um, I saw Cutco at Costco. I don't know if they still do the MLM thing, but they were legit selling knives, interesting. Thank you, Sev. The best. Yes, but Streamlabs takes 3%, so it's 27%. Uh-huh. Bars, bars. Uh-huh. More, more. Thank you. That's the delayed notification for Ryan McDonald. Um, big facts for making these videos. I always show my friend before they get into shit. It can be difficult to unpry the brainwash for real. Big facts. Big facts. Okay. Where's my member emblem? I know damn well I'm a member. Maybe your membership expired. You gotta renew that ass. And you gotta thumbs up the ting too. All my band members have the Nothing Burger sticker on their cars. I love that. Okay, let's, let's do this. I wonder what happened to Oren Woodward and Chris Brady. They were sued by Amway. Was with Mona V slash team, which I was in. Now that biz is gone. Where are they now? Who knows? I force Marco on my friends like it's my religion. It is your religion. It absolutely is your religion. Obama. I have it on auto pay. Mmm, sneakiness. Well, I think the mod, I think the mod wrench supersedes the member star, but I think if you're a member, yeah, if you're a member in a mod, you should have both. Look at Sam here. He's got both. He's flexing on y'all. Okay, ready? Thumbs up the ting. Let's get into it. If, you, if you're just tuning in now, you're late. You're late. I'm not paying for those. Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2 reference. Okay, let's do it. OBS, screen share. Yes! Let's make sure the audio is good. Boom, boom. They're true believers in a golden promise. This is the best opportunity that exists! In the world, period. A dream of wealth they buy into with all their hearts. I will love you guys. I will love you guys. But a year-long Dateline investigation found a disturbing reality. We're destitute. Be a year long, damn. You're gonna see some OGs in this video too. Behind the dream. This was the dirty little secret of Quickstar. Absolutely. What will our hidden cameras reveal? That's what you said. Now. I, I, have a, I will send a, a bounty ransom out right now for anyone who can find the original broadcast in higher quality, like at least 480p. I know this was published probably in like the early 2000s, but still. Chris Hansen with a Dateline hidden camera investigation. Why don't you have a seat right over there? I got a cameo from Chris Hansen long ago. 
And uh, let me see if I still have the, the drops, the Chris Hansen drops. She belongs to the streets. Not that one. Long drive. There's one, long drive. Love when he says that. And there's another one too where he says, Wagwan. Wagwan. I got Chris Hansen to say Wagwan. And this one. You have a hard time finding the place? Hard time finding the place? I love that one. This may look like an old fashioned revival meeting packed with the faithful. Stone Phillips, not your real name. But this crowd is worshiping the almighty dollar. Tonight, the inside story of the business behind these elaborate events that attract hundreds of thousands of people every year. But the promise of easy money selling products like vitamins, cosmetics, and home appliances. Dateline's year-long investigation found a long trail of false promises and broken dreams. Glenn says it's on your channel. Yes, but Glenn, your channel is literally just the screen recording of this. Susie, what up? I overheard, overheard the sales clerk in the beauty section at London Drugs say, they even sell Monet. Which is, of course, fake news, right? Wrong button! Which is, of course, fake news. She looked it up. London Drugs does not sell Monet. Smells sus. Yeah, that, gr that, girl was, that girl was probably selling Monet and is trying to get the other girl, you see me. She was talking about it as if Monet was like some kind of fancy Sephora brand. Of course, of course they do. Every girl I know that's a hairstylist, even if I didn't know at the time, I found out later that they were in an MLM at some point. There was one girl, so my dad used to own a hair salon. There was one girl that was a hairstylist there who had been in Amway for like the longest time. And at this time I was like 18 years old. So I, I wasn't in this world yet. And I had no idea about any of that. But I found out years later that she was like, badly in Amway, like destitute. And uh, then a couple years after this as well, uh, this is after my first video about, no, this is around the time my first video on WFG came out, like 2019. There was one girl that had worked for my dad in those previous years as a hair stylist. And she was in World Financial Group. And I remember she like blocked me on social media. Uh, and then uh, another girl who actually up until I left Canada was still like cutting my hair. Like I would still go see her sometimes to cut my hair. And we had like a good, good rapport. Um, she was in Monate all those years ago. And it's like, damn, man. I mean, hairstylists are probably the most, one of the most pitched demographics too, if you think about it, because anyone who has a job where they're constantly interacting Log with people. Goons. I can't wait to see you and Julie speak at the conference. Thank you, Janet Miller. There you go. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to speak too. I think uh, I think after my speech, I will not be invited back next year. But hey, such is the cost of telling the truth. Um, so, fuck yeah. Um, what was I even saying? Yeah, you know, hairstylists talk to so many people in a day that uh, you know, and and the MLM people, you have to think the MLM distributors. They're not like normal people in a way. And I don't mean that in a humanizing way, a dehumanizing way. I mean, of course, they're people still. But what I mean is their mind has been hijacked. They've been zombified. And now instead of like a zombie who's like brains, they're a hun bot or a hun zombie looking for recruits, sign up. And every person, they're taught, they're trained to look at every single person as a mark from the very first meeting you go to, regardless of what the MLM company is. I've seen this countless times. They will tell you upon your first meeting before you've even signed up and paid, they will tell you to create a list of usually it's 100 names. And in my ACN video, I showed how Nathan, Nathan Goldberg, the ringleader of that ACN scam at that time, he had it down to such a science where he was providing people with pages, um, of all different occupations, all different countries, of people you might know someone from there to like jog your memory. Who is your mailman? Who is your doctor? Do you know anyone who's a firefighter? Do you know anyone who's this? Do you know someone from this country? Do you know someone from that country? Like trying as hard as possible to squeeze every ounce of information about, you know, uh, contact information from the new prospects. So this is why many people are left uh, very defenseless and and taken aback when they when they in, in 
when they encounter this type of aggressive recruiting, aggressive prospecting, because most people I find, most people have fucking social anxiety and they want to stay to themselves. Most people are like, you know, they don't want to talk to some stranger in the grocery store. So when it happens, they're not only are they completely like surprised, but also they, they're not necessarily thinking that this is like some nefarious act that's happening, especially when the thing that the person is saying to you is, hey, I love those shoes. Hey, I like that iPad. Love your glasses. Girl, your hair is amazing. Blah, 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 blah. So it immediately like, it's like the immediate one-two punch of like, first, the element of surprise, a stranger is talking to me. And two, uh, them immediately love bombing you. It's like getting your guard down doubly. So it's horrible. And, and I mean, again, this is how they are trained to operate. You've seen MLM recruiters in my videos talk about how like, yeah, if you order Uber Eats, when the Uber driver comes to your dr door, tell them how much you make in driving Uber. What if I showed you how to make this much with blah, blah, blah. Austin Godsey, when I was doing my uh, exposés on that company a couple years ago, this guy, Austin Godsey, was talking about how he had a three foot rule. And if you're within three feet of him, he's prospecting you. And he taught, he bragged about, I showed in my Instagram stories at that time, he bragged about how like there was a girl who uh, was his server at a restaurant and like on the bill, he wrote, he like circled the total amount and was like, I can, and then wrote a note that was like, I can teach you how to make this in one hour and put his phone number on the back. Like just such a scumbag. He's in jail now, by the way, for um, rape. Yay, I'm always right. I'm always fucking right. Oh shit, when will they learn? Oh shit, they still think I'm a hater. They still think I'm just a hater who just wants to tear people down because I had a bad experience even though I was never in a fucking MLM. And then when they find out I was never in an MLM, they say I don't, I'm not qualified to speak about it because I was never in an MLM. Dominic Izzo here is looking at you, buddy. I mean, I am always right. Austin Godsey and that other dude, Cash Cartier, who I did a debate with on IG Live back in 2021. If you've been following me since then, you know Wagwan. That guy, I didn't include him in any of my main videos because I, I was going to, but I had to shorten one of the videos and he got saved because I, I shortened the video just to save on the, on the length of it. That guy is in jail for murdering his girlfriend. Yes! And nobody listened to Marco when he tried to say, these guys are complete fucking psychopaths and criminals. No one listens to me. No one listens to me. It's it's literally like a, it's literally like what's the fucking movie? I don't know. I'm trying to save people from themselves. Trying to do what I do with this MLM shit. It's literally trying to stop people. It's like trying to pull people up out of the water, and they're like pushing themselves back down, being like, no, no. It's like I'm like, and I'm like trying to tell them, I'm like, you're drowning. You're gonna die. And they're like, no, no. Literally what it's like. It's like you try to pull somebody out of the matrix and they're like, no, plug me back in. It's fucking insanity. So, and of course, I'm, I'm not making that up. You can go Google those. You can go Google those names and, and find the police reports to know that I'm not making it up. Why would I wait three years to say that if it was untrue? It's, it's true. Um, but again, nobody wanted to listen to me. I was showing these people's, I was posting stories of the screenshots of their like criminal histories on my story three years ago, nobody wanted to listen to me. I was saying, it's insane. These guys are not only scammers, but they also have crim like truly criminal history. Nobody listens to me. Aunt Eater Chronicles says, my mom is a hairstylist and I still have the bottle of Monet dry shampoo she gave me, Jesus. I told y'all I went on a date with a Monet girl. I should maybe do a video about this. I've talked about it for so long. Um, she has me blocked, LOL. Ali says, it reminds me of the time I saw a recruiter. By the way, thumbs up the, tr thumbs up the ting right now. Thumbs up the ting. 143 watching. Make it make sense. 145. Ali says, it reminds me of the time I saw a recruiter talk to my friend. The second I walked up to them, the guy kind of froze there like a machine trying to compute an unknown variable. It's insane. The Elizabeth White says, I agree with the zombie part. Everyone looked the same, acted the same, same jargon, dressed the same. It was creepy. Well... What do you expect when their whole business model they talk about is duplication? And they also swear by the tenet of, if you want this thing, find someone who has it and do what they do. They take that so literally, it's crazy. 
Remember three years ago when I was exposing that same company that Austin and Cash were in? And uh, there was the one guy who posted on his uh, live. He was like, if this guy who's my mentor tells me to lick the floor, I'm going to lick the floor. Hey. Hey. What the fuck does licking the floor have to do with business? Hey, you're insane. <laughs> You've lost the plot. Make sure I didn't miss anybody's dono here. Because you know that's the lifeblood of this channel. The Streamlabs link in the chat. Would you guys believe me if I told you that the, the YouTube ad revenue money is so insignificant compared to the donation money? Like, that's how important it is. YouTube, year after year, consistently, like, does everything in their power to lower the amount of money it has to pay out, which it makes sense, I guess. Like, how are they going to profit more? By paying out less. But it's actually crazy how reliant on the crowdfunded element of, of YouTube I am. I've made double the amount of money from live streaming and like, sp not even live streaming, fuck that, specifically from Streamlabs donations than I have from YouTube ad revenue in the entire almost five years that I've been doing YouTube. Think about all the views. Think about all the YouTube premium. That money is so insignificant compared to the streaming. It's like, I'm telling you, it's literally half or maybe less than half. It's fucking insane. Okay. Meek says, I got a comment on my phone for the member emblem to show up. Weird. So strange. Maybe because you're a member on the phone? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, Glenn says, they, they tell stories at meetings of people who thought about prospecting someone. They decided we're not suitable. And then someone else prospected them and they went diamond. Yeah, that's what they always say. You know, you're one recruit away. They cost themselves millions by not prospecting that person. The lesson is prospect every single person you have any contact with. Make an I like your iPad sticker. Nice. Yep. God first. Yep. Meek knows. Marco is a dream stealer. So true. Coconuts says, I have had someone do that to me when I was a server. I've also had a business card put on top of my tip. Blech. Voluntary donations are a grift. So true. I mean, you're all being scammed, but you know that. You already know that. Actually, no, according to Scott and Peter, you guys are too stupid to, uh, to know that. And according to Dominic Izzo, you guys are just all uh, um, bitter, scorned women who, uh, who fuel me because, because of hate. Okay, let's continue this flim. Otherwise, I'll be talking to y'all all day, which is not a bad thing, but you see it. All right, here we go. Here's Chris Hansen with an eight-line hidden camera investigation. Oh, uh, 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 he can't say it. Ah! Out of the darkness of a crowded coliseum, a rally cry. Who, who, freedom! I want you to. I know it's blurry as fuck, but just look at the thousands and thousands of people that are here. They all think they're going to be millionaires. It's mathematically impossible. There has never been a concentration of that many millionaires or future millionaires in one room at the same time ever. Think about how like, I'm pretty sure there's not even enough money in America for every single person in that room to be a millionaire even once over. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but you get me. It's just, it's an impossibility and they all believe it. Thousands of true believers gathered in celebration at arenas like this across the country, all convinced they found the true path to success, wealth beyond their wildest dreams. I've also heard the same thing, by the way. I've heard, I've seen video of leaders at an MLM rally being like, this is the largest congregation of future millionaires that's ever existed. And then everyone in the audience is like, ah! Hey. You lost your mind. This is the best opportunity that exists in the world. Period. 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 It's not second. It's not third. It's number one. This guy's a city girl. Period. 
The promises are golden. You can have a wonderful life, make millions and millions and millions of dollars, but it must start with a dream. And dream they do of luxury homes, fancy cars, yachts, and private planes. So who are all these people, and what are they so worked up about? The people on stage are distributors for a company called Quickstar, which says it's had three billion dollars in sales since 1999. They say the company's special formula for success has made them rich. But their main purpose here is to tell all these thousands of other distributors that they can do it too. All they have to do is sell everything from the company's own line of vitamins and cosmetics to name brand appliances and electronics. For that, they'll get a percentage of the sales. And if they recruit a ton of other people to do the same, they'll get a percentage of the orders placed by everyone they recruit. The more people they recruit, the richer they can get. And richer and richer and richer. You can do it. So why not go for it? Sound too good to be true? We thought it did. In fact, it sounded a lot like another company that made news several years back, Amway. A hugely successful business that came under government scrutiny was fined in order to stop making unrealistic promises about income to its distributors. To find out what Quickstar was up to, we took our hidden cameras to a recruitment meeting in New Jersey, where hundreds held around the country each week and where hundreds of thousands of Quickstar faithful get their start. And the first thing we hear is how easy it is to make it in Quickstar. If you're somewhat serious, oh, I mean by somewhat serious, if you invest maybe say 10 to 15 hours a week in your business, mm -hmm. this is your own business, you could generate the next 12 to 18 months and it's a quarter million. I'm sorry, how much? Quarter million. You're making um, yeah. more than 250, quarter of a million? The recruiter, Greg Fredericks, sure gets our attention. He says he himself has made it big on the Quickstar plan. LOL, this Hitler Youth video is kind of blurry, says Sam. So funny. Freedom, freedom, flush that stinking job. Yes, Glenn, you know that. That's their, their rally cry, or it was, anyways. I owe nobody nothing. You know, and today, you know, I'm looking at a million dollar home, a thousand dollar Rolex just for kicks, and I just got a brand new Lincoln Navigator sitting out front paid for cash. So things are good. And he says those kinds of riches are ours for the taking. And on top of getting rich, we'd also be able to make our own hours and spend more time with our family. So at another meeting, after paying $200 for a starter kit, we sign up and are officially introduced to the Fredericks team. First step, think positive. So I don't put anything into my head that's going to cause me to be thinking outside my positive world. That means no TV, no reading newspapers. Second step, and perhaps the most important, we're told to buy motivational books and tapes from top Quickstar distributors. Reading, I would recommend you start reading your 15 minutes to about a half hour. Ago. Those books and tapes are going to cost us. But one of Frederick's associates says they hold the key to our success. You listen to, keep listening to them over and over again. But it's not just buying the books and tapes, which can go for about $60 a month. Don't let anybody steal your dream. Think and grow rich. Think and grow rich. Do you realize that every MLM video I've made, you hear the top people saying the same exact things? MLM is the exact same grift, the exact same scam, the exact same personalities and mannerisms and psychopaths over and over again, copy and pasted into different bodies, different companies with different disguises, but it's all the same underneath. We're also urged to spend money on seminars for about another $50 a month. Yep, Glenn says, my dad has all those books. It has not changed in 50 years, yep. Janice says, I got my write this down journal. Yes, I love it. And it's definitely better than the Prophet Ray Higgy Boy's journal he was selling on his show. Yes. You guys can get my new book, Write This Down. It's a beautiful journal. Um, I have mine. Where's, where the fuck is mine? Where is it? Hold on. I know y'all can still hear me because I got the lav mic on. Here it is. I got to go into the secret bunker in my hidden base. Here it is. I'm coming back. You're about to see me on screen right now. Watch this. Here we go. 
Here we go. Write this down. This is the new book. Amazing, amazing quality. It's got this uh, leather bound, like a, what are these called? Elastic things to, not leather bound, but an elastic thing to keep it together. It's got a little pocket at the back that you can keep loose papers or notes or love letters that you're working on for me. And I mean, look at, look at it. Just beautiful lined paper enough to last you. I think the, I think it's a three months or six months. Uh, and then guess what you do? You buy another one so you can keep, keep the money coming into Papa and blah, 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 blah. So that's good. Thank you, Janet. Alwaysmarcomerch.com. Look at the bundle. Look at me advertising the bundle right here. Write this down, journal, the anti-pyramid book, the anti-pyramid t-shirt, buddy. He's a conglomerate. I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. <laughs> what song is that? Diamonds Are Forever remix with Jay-Z? Anyways. Oh, Marco, you're just doing this to make money. You're just doing this to make money. Motherfucker, you think this shit is free? You think food and electricity is free? You know? I love it. Well, Marco is defaming our company to try to gain views and make money for his money-making enterprise on YouTube. What a stupid fucking thing to say. What a stupid accusation. So you think I'm just randomly out here making knowingly untrue statements about very legitimate companies just so I can fatten my own pockets? Why would I risk the legal downside of that, the lawsuits and the stress of that? Why would I risk that? Why, like you would have to be truly an idiot to do so. But yes, I do make money off of my videos, which are not false. They're true. Everything's rooted in fact. And uh, just because somebody makes money doesn't mean their intentions are bad or that what they're saying is untrue. It's ultimately ironic when I hear that from people who are in MLMs. It's like your whole religion is about money. Freedom, freedom, flush that stinking job. J-O-B, journey of the broke. Nonsense. So, and, and y'all believe what you're saying is true and it's purely for money. I'm saying something that's actually true and it's not for money, but motherfuckers need money. What do you want me to say? You want me to lie? Teachers also make money. Police officers make money. Firefighters make money. Doctors in the hospital make money. Does that mean they're just doing it for money? It's like, no, you can be a good person and be doing something that helps the world and also make money just because you're not volunteering. Sorry, I'm not Mother Teresa, who, bad example, actually, because Mother Teresa came with many problematic uh, things as well. If you watch Christopher Hitchens, rest in peace, Christopher Hitchens' documentary about Mother Teresa, you'll, uh, I think it's called Angel of Death, such a fire title. Uh, anywho, onward. In days of becoming quick star distributors, we told of one big event we shouldn't miss. The physical event. The adventure event. One. A few hundred dollars later, we find ourselves on a bus ride, a 14-hour bus ride from New Jersey to South Carolina, for something called Spring Leadership Weekend. To Fredericks and others, it's not just a business trip, it's a pilgrimage. Well, we ask you for a spirit of openness so that we might go down to Greenville, South Carolina, Lord, that we might be changed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. Let's have a great weekend. At the arena in South Carolina, people have been sleeping outside like teenagers at a rock concert. You've also seen that in my videos too. People sleeping on pool chairs next to the pool outside the Airbnb. Four people in a single bed in the hotel room and more people on the floor. We arrive the next day. It's not long before the crowd swells. We're part of a fevered rush to get inside. 15,000 pack the arena as we thrill to a carefully choreographed show that promises money and everything that comes with it. We're Imagine paying to go get gassed up and travel 14 hours, so 28 hours the round trip, right? 14 hours there, 14 hours back, presumably. Paying for it both ways. You got to eat both those travel days. You got to stay in a hotel when you're there. You got to pay for the tickets to the event. Damn, bro. Complete fucking scam. And whatever else they're upselling you there. Just so you can get back home and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How long does that last for? A week? A month? 
That's why they do these rallies every multiple times a year. We're urged by those successful Quickstar distributors on stage to dream big like they do. We've got four homes and 32 cars and we got all that. What do we do now? And we're just saying, let's buy a country. <laughs> Such a cock. Let's buy a country. Buy, did he just say buy a country? I love how it's like he's so disconnected from the from the things that actually make somebody human and the things that make life worth living that he's like, it, it's only about the next thing you could buy. You know, there's like at, at no point did he think during the process of buying his 32 cars and four houses. At no point did he think like, how can I make the world a better place? The next logical step for him was, let's buy a country. <laughs> and the funniest part of it is that that guy was probably broke, despite saying all of that shit. The excitement builds with each success story. This man says he once ran a car wash. His vision of financial freedom moves the crowd to a chant we hear over and over again. The speakers are treated like superstars, all living testaments to what happens when you follow the Quickstar plan. But there's one who's become an icon. If Quickstar is a religion, this man is its pope. His name is Bill Britt, and legend has it he's worth millions, all because of Quickstar. I got this for five reasons. Good reason. First one was money. The second reason I got in was for money. <laughs> that, that's my all time. <laughs> So devoted are the followers, many in the crowd with us become sleep deprived, afraid to miss out on advice that will make them millionaires. Such devotion is hard to fathom. Steve Hassan talks in his books about how when he was first indoctrinated into the Moonies, that was the first thing they did was they told him it was only going to be like a short presentation and then it ended up going all through the night and the next day he wanted to go home and then they were like, oh no, you can't go home now. We just started the first day. This is the whole weekend. And it wasn't until he was like literally threatening to call the police and kicking and screaming that they finally decided to drive him back and even then they, they kept trying. It's like, it's so evil. But anyways, he talks about how like sleep deprivation is one of the key things that cults use to weaken your mental state. You're more impressionable if you haven't had any sleep. I mean, imagine all of us have had at some point, like we wake up from our sleep, maybe we had a nightmare, or obviously not me because I am you know, don't have nightmares, but you, you have a nightmare or you wake up from some l loud sound or your alarm or whatever, and you're like disoriented. That's the whole purpose of this. But we see just how far it goes on the last night of the weekend when a single candle is lit. Soon the dark arena becomes a tabernacle, a shrine to the quick star dream. So scary, bro. For some, a solemn and tearful promise to their leader. But are the leaders keeping their promises to the faithful? What the thousands lighting candles in this arena don't realize is that 99.9% .9 of them will not only never get rich from Quickstar, won't even come close. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sanjula being woken up by the earthquake. Hope everyone is safe from the earthquake. When my dad arrived home from these events, he was so pumped up. I feel so bad for this story, Glenn. I got in for money, 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 and money. That is not what the failed IBOs say, right? Yeah, man. You know what's funny is these people talk about going after your dreams, but it's like, ask any one of them, was your dream, was your dream before all of this to be a top Amway double diamond? Was that, was that anyone's dream? Of course not. And that's actually, ironically, that's one of the things Steve Hassan says as part of the strategic interactive approach of dealing with people who are in cults is like, you need to connect with their pre-cult self try to get them to have a That's So Raven flash backwards into their life and, and try to connect with the person they were 
before they got brainwashed, ask them like, okay, what were you into? You know, what was your dream before this? What were you studying in school, et cetera, et cetera? Who were your best friends, et cetera? And try to get them to remember um, who they really are because as we know, MLM cults will slowly strip away who you are and you start devoting all your time to this thing. Now you're not writing poetry or painting or doing any of the things you wanted to do truly because you believe that you need to give everything to this and that everything else is a waste of time and that everyone else is a waste of time and energy if they're not in this dream with you. Steve Hassan talks about how he threw away like all of his poetry works that he'd been working on when he was a young man because he was in the Moonies now. It's such a shame to hear about this shit, man. It's such a shame. In your opinion, what is it? I would use the word scam. When we return, what's really going on behind the promises of financial windfalls, fabulous mansions, and fancy cars? It's hurt us. It's hurt a lot of people. The dark secret that left some distributors in desperate trouble. Returning to our story, the pitch for a company called Quickstar has attracted hundreds of thousands of followers with stories of financial success, beautiful homes, expensive cars, the good life. All you have to do, they say, is buy and sell the company's products. But Dateline's investigation found there's something they don't tell you. Once again, Chris Hansen. Who, <laughs> who, freedom, flush that stinking job. Nobody needs a job. We'll all just join Amway. We don't need any, we don't need any doctors. We don't need anyone working in the restaurants, we don't need any chefs, we don't need any firefighters, we don't need any policemen. Flush those stinking stupid J-O-Bs. Journey of the broke, just over broke, jackass of the boss. You don't need it, everyone should be in this. And if you're not, well, it's not for everyone. We still need people to flip the burgers and make the coffee. But I thought everyone should be, I thought we should flush the job. It doesn't make sense. The freedom to flush that stinking job. That's the promise. And that's exactly what Eric Scheibler did. Uh, Shout out Eric Scheibler. He's spoken at the MLM conference before too. He's the author of Merchants of Deception. I gotta talk, I gotta do an interview with this guy. I thought if I could create a six figure income uh, and spend time with my family, I'd do anything for that. For two to five Scheibler, years. at the time a federal auditor, had heard the stories and seen the videos. You know, we get up in the morning as we wish. Don't get up to an alarm clock very often. Oh, no alarm clock. Where, would we, where have we heard that? Hartage, I don't need to wake up with an alarm clock. Literally every MLM, Nathan, in the ACN video, you heard them all say it. Um, that's uh, something we sort of gave up and we got rid of the job. Scheibler signed up and after a few years working part-time in the business, ceremoniously shot his own alarm clock. Oh. He triumphantly quit his day job. With a limo waiting, it was party time as he walked into the welcoming arms of his family and friends in the business. Yeah. Goodbye, boss. Hello, family. That's right. Exactly. Seemed to be Goodbye, boss. Hello, family. That's right. Exactly. Seemed to be the American dream. What does that cost? Probably about $120. But instead of a life of leisure and more... Oh, wow. A book of tapes. That's crazy. What up, bad dog? I knew you'd like this one. Thank God I did not go to this creepy ass function. I was in quick start during this time. My upline kept telling me I had to go to this. Insane. Time with his family. Thumbs up the ting. Almost 200 people watching. How many likes we got? Ooh, not enough. He says he worked day and night, buying the tapes, attending the rallies. Still, he made nowhere near the six figure salary he thought he would. In fact, in his best year, he made $34,000. And even that didn't last. What do you have today? Uh. We're destitute, financially. It's, uh, we'll change that, but financially we have nothing as a specific result of this. We heard it again and again. People who work the quick start plan only to suffer in the end. It's hurt us. It's hurt a lot of people. Vicki and Lindy Max say they not only didn't make money, they lost more than $35,000 over a five-year period, much of it on books, tapes, and traveling to rallies. That, by the way, is like... A year at Harvard. No kidding. I know that. We know that. 
So why, despite the promises, did the Max and thousands of others end up on the losing end of the Quickstar dream? If these few people's stories were enough to make it to a nationally broadcasted news story, you know, we feel for these people, right? We, we have empathy for these people. What I want you to really grasp, though, is this is not a unique case. Millions, tens of millions of people suffer this same fate every single year because of the hundreds and hundreds of MLM companies that exist globally. You know, it, it, it doesn't even scratch the surface. This man says it's because it's based on a lie. Oh, enjoy your vacation, bad dog. And he should know. His name is Bo Short, and for a time he was selling the dream himself as one of Quickstar's brightest stars. I will tell you this, I do not want you to leave excited. I want you to leave committed. But he says he began to realize he was part of a mass deception. You see these videos of these attractive couples driving Porsches and Ferraris, panoramic shots of the palatial mansion. Right. Is that actually achievable by selling Quickstar products? Based on my experiences, no. How are these people getting all this stuff then? There is another business. And it's a business that is completely separate from Quickstar. A hidden business that most recruits don't realize exists. Short says many of those high-level distributors singing the praises of Quickstar on stage are actually making most of their money by selling motivational books, tapes, and seminars. Not Quickstar's cosmetics, soaps, and electronics. This was the dirty little secret. That's exactly what it was. Absolutely. That's not what you hear at the convention. No, and that's not what you're told in somebody's living room when you see it either. In fact, about 20 high-level distributors are part of an exclusive club. One that those hundreds of thousands of other distributors don't get to join. For years, only a privileged few, including Bill Britt, have run hugely profitable... LOL, waving his microphone over the crowd like a magic wand. ...old businesses, selling all those books, tapes, and seminars. Things the rank-and-file distributors can't sell themselves, but are told over and over again they need to buy in order to succeed. Anything you need to become successful, you have at your disposal. All you have to be willing to do for a nominal thing is to start purchasing the materials that will help you to build your business. Literally EA, Electronic Arts' uh, whole business model around games now. You have all the tools you need to win the game. You just need to be able to pay for it with loot boxes and pay to win <laughs> season passes and bullshit. Ah, it's fucking insane. You have everything you need to you need to succeed. You just need to pay for it. You can't make this shit up. Successful. You have at your disposal. All you have to be willing to do for a nominal thing is to start purchasing the materials that will help you to build your business. For a nominal fee, and it's all just the same fucking babble over and over again, man. is to start purchasing the materials that will help you to build your business. Why are the recruits told to listen to the tapes and read the books over and over and over again? Because it creates a dependency and it creates a habit that keeps you bound to that business. Vicki Mack knows all about that. Even though she's a medical doctor, a pediatrician with a thriving practice, she found herself slaving away in the pursuit of new Quickstar recruits. After all, new recruits mean new sales, and new sales mean more money. We'd be out just even hanging out at McDonald's, at the play places, talking to parents. At McDonald's? Yeah. Now, you graduated from Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Went to medical school. Mm-hmm. Making a very fine salary as a pediatrician yeah. and yet you're in a mall and a McDonald's on a Saturday trying to sell this thing? Parth, you are a complete fucking dickhead. Yeah? Parth in the chat says, it's gross how Marco tries to change the message of companies that have actually made a lot of people money unlike him. Parth, this video is made by Dateline NBC. 
with and Chris Hansen. Are they just being haters as well too? Amway has made a lot of people money. This is true. They've been around a long time. They've made a lot of people a lot of money. And the amount of people that had to be scammed in order for those people to make money is so many multiples of the people who actually made money that it's it's not even a joke. But Parth, you should keep educating yourself. I mean, perhaps uh, perhaps you're here because there is some seed of doubt. If you were so certain about Amway, I'm sure you wouldn't be here trying to argue with little old irrelevant me on the internet, right? None of this surprises Bo Short. Not the commitment of... What up, JT? Time and money, not the emotion, as we saw at the rally we attended. There's a man with tears. There are probably... He, he cheated on his wife. He's not actually a decent human being. LOL, do you know that for a fact? Also, Martin Luther King, cheated, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. cheated on his wife. That's, that's well documented. I like to look at the net impact a person or a thing has had on the world. The world is not black and white. There is gray to the world. Just like in MLMs, there are people who perpetrate a scam, but unwittingly. They themselves were scammed, and then they started recruiting other people into the scam. Thus, they were scamming other people. Does that mean they were bad people? They were scammers? Maybe not. Maybe they were brainwashed. We don't know everybody's circumstances. Um, but, you know, the world, is, the world is not black and white. So I like to look at the, the net impact of a person or a thing. And I think it's without a doubt that Chris Hansen's net impact on the world is overwhelmingly positive. And Amway's net impact on the world is a resounding negative. Many people with tears. And not all of those tears are because they're committed to it. Many of those tears are because they, they have worked diligently and are not any closer. If this is not a legitimate business opportunity, then in reality, in your opinion, what is it? I would use the word scam. Chris Hansen is not MLK. Okay, so now we're just deflecting away. I didn't say he was MLK. I was giving you an exact analogy for your thing. You said Chris Hansen is not a good guy because he cheated on his wife. That's what you said. And I brought, I countered by saying, well, was Martin Luther King not a good guy because he cheated on his wife? And your response is, well, he's not, he's not MLK. Okay. And I'm only, I'm only playing with your rules here, Parth. I'm only using your example to give you an equivalent example of judging someone's character based on their infidelity. And then what did you do? You immediately reverted and abandoned that whole line of argument and said, Amway is a good company. Regardless, Chris was wrong of his assessment of Amway. Uh, Amway is a good company. There's a reason Bill Clinton visited us. What a fucking idiot. Can't make this shit up. Thumbs up the ting. That's what I was thinking, too. Bo Short says when he and several other high-level distributors began to suspect the same thing, they confronted the company's managing director, Ken McDonald. And I said, Ken, I believe that people are stealing money and you're letting it happen. And he didn't respond. And I, and I remember looking at him a few minutes later, I said, Ken, kick some of them out. Show people you're serious. And he looked at me and said, what would happen to the business? Parth says, I hope y'all actually research this stuff. Give us a chance for only $500. Bro, this guy's got to be trolling. Short said, and said, what would happen to the business? Short says the company acknowledged it had been aware of the problem for decades. How could that be? Remember when we said Quickstar sounded a little like Amway? A company which drew the ire of the federal government several years back for making false promises to recruits? Well, it turns out Quickstar isn't just like Amway, it was Amway. Surprise! Quickstar is just its new incarnation with many of the same players. Oh, so it's a new disguise? If the previous thing was working just fine before and it was a completely legitimate business, why would you need to rebrand? Eric Scheidler and the Max began as Amway distributors. And many of those same high-level Quickstar distributors also began with Amway. So did Bo Short, who says he decided to walk away from the business and all the money that came with it. You were a poster boy for this outfit. You were on the company yacht. Are you now turning around and biting the hand that fed you? I don't care if anyone thinks I'm biting anyone's hand that fed me. I'm telling the truth. Quickstar. Bars. 
G shit, for real. Speak the truth. Declined to be interviewed on camera, but its managing director, Ken McDonald, says in a letter that Short's recollection of events is misleading. And he questioned Short's motivation for speaking out. Short does run a small direct marketing firm himself, and Quickstar considers him a potential competitor. Quickstar also says it prohibits its independent distributors from making exaggerated claims about income. As for the company's income, most of that comes from the sale of products. That's such an easy blanket, like, bandage that an MLM company can use, is if, like in the case of this investigation, independent distributors are found out to be making these ridiculous income claims, the company can just say, well, it's part of our uh, rules, part of our ethics policy that you're not allowed to do that. So that's not a reflection on the company. That's just a bad apple. But they know, they know damn well that all of them are doing it. And it's clear that they themselves are making these kind of claims because if you go to one of these rallies, which are corporate sponsored, you know, these rallies are not put on by individual distributors. They're rallies supported and paid for by the company itself, by the corporate entity itself, where these independent distributors speak on stage and say the exact same things. So how can you say that it's not allowed, but you guys are endorsing it? Well, it's just, uh, it's just a lie. It's a lie that they don't allow it. It's the plain, simple truth. I wish, sometimes I wish I was able to, you know, it's, it's fun when I'm able to point out how the, there's some clever language trickery or some logical fallacy or some false equivalence that somebody says, and I'm able to show how, like pick it apart and show how it's like a verbal magic trick. But sometimes it's just simply a lie. Sometimes it's just a flat out up and down untruth lie. And that's not as exciting for me to be like, well, that's not true. It's easier for me to be like, do you see what he did there with the words? Well, he replaced this word with that word and this is actually double speak and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they're just flat out fucking lying. And not sometimes, that's what they're all doing. That's what every MLM is doing. Shocker. They're all lying about everything. Not from tapes and books and tickets to rallies. In its contracts, the company discloses that some distributors do make money from those sales, but that buying those materials is strictly voluntary. I was going to say this earlier, too, when the guy said, uh, you have access to all the tools you need to be successful, just you need to pay a small nominal fee to buy it. When these people say, uh, you know, this is also something that is pointed out in lawsuits against MLMs is the, the FTC or whoever is suing them will be like, yeah, I was pressured or forced to buying all these tapes and materials and they were just, they were just fluff. They were just bullshit. The company can say, well, it was your choice to buy them. It's your choice to buy X, Y, and Z. It's your choice to go to this rally. So they'll say, it's your choice. But then again, so is success, right? The illusion of choice. As for Bill Britt and some of the other top-level distributors we saw on stage, they also declined our request for an on-camera interview. Of course. But their lawyer told us in a letter that the income claims we heard are not promoted or endorsed by Britt and those other top distributors. Not endorsed, but they themselves literally said the same shit. He also wrote that buying the books and tapes is voluntary and that how much they make from those sales is not available. Of course. So how much does a Quickstar distributor really make? Well, only about $1,400 per year. What's the source for that figure? It's Quickstar itself. You can find it in the fine print of the company's own registration materials. And if that sounds bad, if that sounds like, oh, only a little more than $100 a month or $25 a week, that's not very good. Consider the source of the information is Amway itself. And Amway is reporting an average figure, not a typical figure. They're telling you the average amount that people make, not the typical amount that people make. It's a very important distinction. And the average, of course, is calculated by taking all of the people who made anything and dividing it by the number of people in the company. So this means, again, this means the number is being massively inflated by the people who are actually making millions, the very few. And I've used this example before. I've said, what's the average income between you and Jeff Bezos? just half of Jeff Bezos. But if you do that calculation, it will look on paper like you are both making a lot of money when in reality you're making essentially nothing compared to Jeff Bezos. Any one of us watching this stream right now, any, any one of our incomes compared to Jeff Bezos, 
our income may as well be zero. Unless it's not. And if it's not and you're watching this, why have you not hit the Streamlabs link in the chat? But uh, yeah, it's like saying what's the average income between you and Jeff Bezos. It's, it's so, it's deceptive. And then on top of that, this average also doesn't factor in the costs. So this is $1,400 a year, not including the $500 startup cost, not including any of the books or tapes you may have been pressured to buy, not including the cost of the 14-hour bus ride there and the 14-hour bus ride back and the ticket to the event itself and all the food you had to eat while you were there and these extra expenses that don't directly factor into the business opportunity, but they are essential. You know, If you're traveling for business to an Amway event, you need to eat food. So you need to buy food. You need to sleep somewhere. You need a hotel. These are costs that are like miscellaneous costs that the company will try and say, oh, well, that's not, a, that's not an expense associated with us. But of course it is. Of course it is. You wouldn't have been going there if it weren't, you wouldn't have been paying for that thing if you weren't in this business, for example. So business, you know, the most cleverly, Sinister, evil, deceptive scam in human history, without a doubt. $1,400. That's $248,600 less than what our recruiter, Greg Fredericks, said we could make. We caught up with him at one of his recruitment meetings. We're doing a story on Quickstar and Quickstar distributors. Okay. And these folks here work with me. Oh, great. We wanted to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Hey, I just want to make sure I heard you right now. First, we reminded him about the money he said we could make. You're making um, more than 250 quarter of a million? Are you really making? How about disclose that? A quarter of a million dollars. I don't working nearly 50 to 16 hours a week. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to disclose you my information as well. I'm not going to disclose it. Well, motherfucker, you already disclosed it when you thought the cameras were off. See, this, this is the thing. There's a, such a mighty discrepancy and such a, such a huge gap between what the people claim behind closed doors when they think no one's watching and what they say in their official statements and what they actually fucking do. You saw this with Nathan. Nathan didn't know he was on hidden camera. That's such a good fucking video. I love that ACN video, man. Nathan, remember when he's sitting there like this close from the camera? He doesn't even know my pen is a camera because I was sitting there with my pen. Where the fuck is my pen? I was sitting there like this with my pen. I'll show you. I was sitting there talking to Nathan like this. I was sitting there like, I was like this, I was, I was like that. So it looked natural. It looked like I was just holding my pen like this. He doesn't know there's a fucking camera right here. So he's literally speaking. So I, or I'll be like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's literally speaking directly. It's right in front of his face. And you know, he's saying, oh, we don't report the taxes to the government until we make this much. And you know, my girl Julia over here, if she recruits this many people, she'll make 200 fucking bucks ahead on everybody, blah, 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 blah. Bunch of these black people are hers. Remember when he said that? Such a good video. I'm really the big, the biggest. I'm really the biggest when it comes to this shit. <laughs> Woo, big up myself one time, big up myself. Hell yeah. Hype when I think about that shit. And then the fact that they ACN never even sued me. In fact, not only did they not sue me, they didn't help Nathan at all. They completely threw Nathan under the bus, deleted him from all their social media, deleted him from the page on their website uh, called Success Stories, where there was like 25 top ACN people that you could go read about them. And there was a little video. And Nathan, they just removed him. You click on the link and it says for error 404. Page cannot be found. Ooh, and then Nathan gets fucking kicked out of the company. Oh, and now he's like selling some insurance back in. Uh, he moved back to the East Coast, I think, to Quebec or Montreal or something. I think Montreal and is now selling insurance. Bro, Mwah! literally ran him out of town. I'm the best. <laughs> Wait till you see what I do next. My personal income. But what he did let slip when he didn't know the camera was rolling was that one of the elite distributors we saw on stage is making most of his money from the motivation business. Probably three quarters of it. And that's from seminar, holding seminars? Seminars, rallies, 
functions, motivational tools, tapes, books, uh, speaking engagements, appearances. But he didn't seem to remember saying that. I don't know. From, from that, that, came from. that I don't know. You're mentioning a number here, three quarters of what his income. That's what you said, not what I said. Did I say that? And that's about all he had to say. Well, I can't, I just, I gotta run. Later, we found out something else about Fredericks. Tell Back him. in the mid-90s, he was arrested and charged with possession of crack cocaine and is still wanted by police to face charges in North Carolina. What about others involved in Quickstar? Wait, Both wait, wait. The FBI and the... Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me, Chris Hansen, you're telling me a guy who relentlessly scams people with no remorse whatsoever also happened to be a criminal in his past life? Only, only some years ago, he was an actual criminal? I can't believe this. He's still wanted by police in that state? I cannot, I cannot believe you've done this. Crack cocaine. Oh my goodness, Chris. I can't believe you've done this, Chris. Streamlabs link in the chat, Chris. Oh, Streamlabs link in the chat, so true. Oh, I can't believe that. A guy who, a guy who has clearly no fucking soul is still on the run from the police. He was, oh no, he has criminal history. Austin Gotti in jail for rape. Cash Cartier in jail for murdering his girlfriend. But these guys are in legitimate businesses. These guys are entrepreneurs. These guys are their own business owners who have their own teams. They're not doing anything wrong. It's not a pyramid scheme. These are good people. What about others involved in Quickstar? Both the FBI and the criminal division of the IRS are making separate inquiries into at least two top distributors not focused on in this report. In the meantime, the FBI and the criminal division of the IRS are making separate inquiries into at least two top distributors not focused on in this report. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of true believers are drawn into Quickstar every year, dazzled by the promise of the good life. But unless things change, says Bo Short, it's a broken promise that will leave broken hearts. I think people are being hurt. Because understand, the majority of the people in that audience believe or desperately, desperately want to believe. And they sit there with their hearts in it. What about them? All these people you're seeing lost money. Verifiable fact. Some former high-level distributors have filed a lawsuit against Quickstar in federal court, accusing the company of antitrust violations and conspiracy. Quickstar disputes the allegations and says it hopes the matter will be resolved through arbitration. Of course. Of course it will. Because you can just pay a fine. Pay a fine, pay them some hush money, get rid of it, bury it, don't, let, don't ever let it go to trial, don't ever let it be put on the record what this company is or what it does. Exposing it for what it truly is. I am the first person, I am the first person who... I can't say too much. I can't say too much, but let me tell you, this, this trend of MLM companies just being able to buy people's silence or you know, hide it under the rug and continue to pay for the privilege of not being exposed, it's, it's over. It's, or at least it's coming to an end. Everybody that's ever tried to go against these MLMs in the past, they've had, the, they've had to make the decision. You know, it's, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I have to sue this company, which is going to take years in court and cost me who knows how much money in legal fees. There's the chance that I may lose the case and get nothing. Thank you, Jenna Miller. There's also the risk that rather than them actually being held to task for what they do, that they just offered to buy my silence. And by that point, three, four years has already gone on, maybe more. I'm so stressed out about it. I'm so exhausted with it. I just want it to be over. I'm not even going to make any money from this. I'm just going to break even or maybe just the legal costs will be covered. And where are we? Back to where we were on day zero. The company doesn't have to change anything. They don't have to do anything. I've, I've signed some paper that says I'll never talk about this company again. And I'm 
my silence has been bought and paid for and they've used their financial might to continue to unperson people and create revisionist history that makes it look like nothing happened. Nothing happened. You didn't see that. You lost money. It was your fault. This is a legitimate business. Two plus two is five. The sky is green. We're a legitimate company. It's over. I'm telling you, just wait and see. Just wait and see. It's going to take more time. But, uh, you know, this is why it's so important to use your voice. Imagine back when this video was made, there was no YouTube. When this video was made, this was like a once in a while thing that a big publication like this came along and actually documented this kind of deception. And a big company like Dateline NBC, they have the legal resources to be able to fight something like this. That's why the John Oliver MLM video hasn't been taken down by uh, you know the people from Market America or whatever MLM company that was featured in it because HBO has the money to be able to fight a lawsuit like that. Uh, Dateline NBC has the money to fight a lawsuit like that. Who do they go after? The individual people who are actually saying the real truth, the YouTubers, the, the independent journalists, the influencers who are actually telling the truth about what these companies are and what they really do. That's who's getting the brunt of it. And those are ironically the, peop the same people who are really the only people you can actually rely on to say the true, the truth about what MLM is. Because a lot of the bigger news companies, they want to tread very lightly and they want to sugarcoat it so that they don't get sued. Because even though they have the resources, they may have the resources, they don't want to, they don't want the headache. So that's why you never see, even in this publication, they never outrightly say, yeah, this is a scam. They still refer to it as a company, for example. Well, a company or a business where 99% of people are proven to lose money, I would argue that is not a business at all. If as a result of the actual business model, 99% of people were going to lose money, that is a scam. For example, 50% is a flip of a coin. Would you call flipping a coin a business? Would you call a 50-50 chance of success a, a good business? Of course not. If you knew there was a 50-50 chance you were going to lose regardless of the amount of effort you put in, people would be like, this is fucking bullshit. It's like I'm gambling at that point. So, a so imagine a 99% loss rate. It's a complete fucking scam. So uh, I've got a lot to say at uh, the conference next month, that's for sure. And um, yeah, this is... They can't sue all of us. And the truth of the matter is, if more people were coming out and making videos about individual MLM companies, uh, eventually this would have to stop, you know, the, the whole settlement thing. MLM companies never want to go to trial. This is something you need to understand. MLM companies would rather go to arbitration, meaning they would rather negotiate, mediate, settle out of court. You know, when they say settle out of court, some undisclosed amount of money was paid from one person to the other so that the person who was exposing the truth would be silenced and hush money. This has worked for them. The reason they're so keen, the reason MLM companies are so keen to take this approach is because MLM companies operate by hiding the truth, by lying, by not answering questions, by, as we saw in this, Amway, uh, this Chris Hansen presentation, by walking away from the questions when they get confronted with the hidden camera footage, by burying the truth, by removing Nathan from the website, acting like it never happened, on and on. If you actually get to the point where in a court process, you are able to question the top people of an MLM or the people at an MLM who are promoting it at any level, really, but typically at the higher levels. If you're able to go to the discovery process where they have to submit their financials to you and answer questions under oath about these discrepancies and about their actual business model and how much money comes from you selling products versus how much money comes from the sign-up fees from new recruits, they don't want this to happen. They will do anything to avoid this happening because if you have them there under oath, meaning they're forced to tell the truth under, you know, risk of perjury, you know, they'll be in more trouble if they don't tell the truth. Outside in the real world, they can lie and finagle jangle the words as much as they want. But if you actually have them, you know, on the stand, under oath, in court, where they're 
they're sworn to tell the truth and they have to provide truthful statements about simple questions about the structure of the, bu the business, it's just going to fall apart on them so quick. So what do they try to do? They try to settle it as soon as possible so that they don't get to this point where it goes into the court system and it's on the record that this was shown about them and whatever, whatever, whatever. But imagine if everybody was making videos or if more victims were making videos about these types of scams, about these companies. It wouldn't be feasible for them to settle with everybody. And of course, they only sue the people who have a big enough voice. You'll find any MLM company, you can find a video with like a thousand views or a few hundred views of somebody talking about how it was a scam. And all of the information may be correct, but it just didn't blow up. So the, the, the public reputation threat of that video wasn't enough for the company to take action. They would just say, oh, that person's just a hater, you know, there are bad Google reviews of everything. doesn't mean it's a bad restaurant, blah, 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 blah. They have all these false equivalencies to explain it away. But if a video hypothetically were to come out that was made by an individual person, hypothetically, who worked on it for six months, hypothetically, and it came out and became one of the biggest pieces of MLM related content in history, and it was only up for, let's say, a little over a week, and it got nearly a million views, despite the platform that it was posted on being a very small platform, and it was just an astronomically big video that got an unheard of amount of views for a creator of that size, hypothetically, then they may hypothetically take action against that person. And that person will have to make a choice eventually. Am I going to fight and prove and, and fight and pull the mask off of the Scooby-Doo villain and show the world the truth? Or am I going to be faced with the decision of taking the hush money? We'll see. We'll see. But I'm just saying, they couldn't sue everybody. They couldn't settle with everybody. Okay? There needs to either be a large enough volume of content about that company, uh, a big enough piece of content about that company, or both. So I, that's why I always encourage people to to use your voice, you know? If you're a small platform, the risk is relatively low. I mean, maybe your video does good and you get a cease and desist letter, but a, a cease and desist is not really a real case until they actually sue you. And even at the point they do sue you, they're counting on you being stressed out to the point that you just give up on it, or you running out of money because you can't get the lawyer, or you not knowing what you're doing uh, in terms of representing yourself, again, it's a game of poker. This is not like the movies where you walk into court and make some, you know, rousing speech and the judges move to tears and you win and everybody claps and carries you out the front of the courthouse and the news is there talking about what an amazing victory and the end credits roll. No, this is like a game of poker. The bigger stack of chips can take bigger risks. The bigger stack of chips can throw their weight around to get you to doing something to folding or to going all in and taking the big risk. So... We'll see. I also want to reference uh, or respond to Bad Dog's comment here where he talks about the, the Rolexes. He says, all these MLM dickheads buy fake jewelry and it's always a Rolex because they think Rolex is the only timepiece that matters. Yes, I've talked in my videos about the fashion choices of some of these businessmen. And I talk about, you know, they've accused me of just saying this as an inflammatory, like def defamatory way of talking about their clothing choices where I talk about they're wearing like mismatched brand names where they're wearing like a Gucci belt and Louis shoes and like the whole thing just looks off. This is actually a very educated observation of the disguise they use to look legitimate. This is not just me hating because of my personal distaste for their fashion choices. This is actually me drawing attention to the fact that these people wear designer clothing as a means of exemplifying an opulent lifestyle. It's part of the deception. It's part of the lie, the big lie of, yeah, you can make a million dollars, just recruit five people who recruit five people. So I just wanted to acknowledge that for a second. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Janet Miller, for, for being a member. Really appreciate that. Basic Markonomics, so true. So true. Thank you, Bad Dog, for saying my ACN video was a masterpiece. It's it's interesting to go back and look at videos that did well for me, like the ACN video, back when I was just shooting on my phone and like didn't really know anything about editing. Like I was editing on iMovie. Because it's like if I made that video today, I think it would be maybe not way better, but it would certainly be better. You know. 
Make Marco safe again. So true. I mean, nobody's ever, 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 ever done what I'm doing. And what I mean by that is no one has ever like tried to stick it to the man of MLM to this level and been a small creator getting views like I've been able to get on my big investigation videos. I know not all my videos are the craziest shit, but on my big investigations, they're the biggest and that's without argument. And that's because I really work for months and months on these videos. I'm working on another one right now. And uh, nobody's ever done what I've done in terms of getting the pressure put on them, getting the, the harassment, getting the, uh, the private investigators showing up at my home, etc., and like adapting by going to another part of the world and not folding. No one's ever like puffed their chest out like me. That's a fact. And I don't even, I'm not even saying that to like discredit other people. I don't blame other people for not wanting to do that. It's so fucking stressful. Other people that make videos about MLM, they have like actual jobs and, and families and marriages and kids that they're responsible for. Like, of course, you don't want to waste your life force fucking, you know, dealing with lawsuits, fighting against a company that has unlimited money. But, uh, you know, I'm a young man. I'm not married. I don't have children. Now is the time for me to make my mark on the world and fight the good fight and fight for the truth. Jose Cabuco, you are a G. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jose Cabuco, been supporting for a hot minute. Okay, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Write that down. Is there a site that has all the products that are MLM-based for people to fact-check that they are BS? I mean, you can literally Google the name of a company, but um, pyramidschemealert.org, you can check that site out but also r slash anti MLM. Usually if you search is blank and MLM, the first Google result will usually be uh, a post on Reddit r slash anti MLM and you can, you can check that. So just know there are risks. If you get involved with a girl named Erica and she's in her prime and she travels around the world, but primarily lives in America and you have a very passionate and primal love, then you know that there's going to be risks associated with it. Just let me tell you that. Um, when am I going to talk about the Coscott ruling and Coscott test? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. What up, Bam? Giselle says, also, someone independently talking about MLM scams doesn't always have the financial ability to get in a legal fight. So true, so true, so true. Okay, I already said that. Um, people need to stop expecting money from a lawsuit. Sometimes the win is not monetary. So true. Only the big YouTubers get sued. Have I seen Vince's newest video where he attacks you? No, I haven't. But I but Vince did DM me and say, hey, Marco. He said, Marco, I like my house. Because I read, I read Glenn's comment on the last stream where Glenn said, Vince claims to be a millionaire or claims to be a success but lives in a mobile home. I mean, that is funny and also true. And also, much love to you, Vince. You know I rock with you, but... Uh, Stop the cap. I know, I know you can only get away with saying it's a choice to live in a mobile home for so long. Like, I mean, bro, if you're actually claiming to be a successful businessman, I'm sorry, you cannot, I'm sorry, you know. Glenn, uh, Bam says, million a week, the, wa the wave that would have made over time. Oh, just wait and see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Patience. My patience is greater, is stronger than my enemy. My iron mind and my mental resolve is stronger than my enemy. My willingness to throw down is stronger than my enemies. Just wait and see, please, please, please. Remix the ACN video, add some behind the scenes footage or commentary. That's kind of what I did with the ACN part two video. ACN part two was made up with uh, a lot of the footage that I got from ACN part one. And then I talked more about like the actual structure of the, the company and the political lobbying and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Bad Dog says, your ACN video is how I found you. I became a fan then and there. Thank you, G. Yeah, to this day, there's no other YouTube videos like that. Like there's many anti MLM videos talking about like, you know, reading horror stories and giving overviews like 
uh, video essay type of videos, but zero, I'm still to this day not seeing anyone do an in-person infiltration with, you know, I've seen people do videos where they go in and they're like, this is a pyramid scheme. And they're like in there in person. But I'm talking about like playing the long game, like spying on Zoom meetings, going in person, like pretending to actually be interested, like getting the, all the information. That's what I'm talking about. Marco started off local, but thanks to all the haters, he knows G1 pilots on a first name basis. And your city faded off the brown. Nino, she insists she got more class. We know, swimming in the money, come and find me. Nemo, if I was at the club, you know I'll ball. Chemo, drop the mixtape, the shit sounded like an album. Who'd have thought a countrywide tour would be the outcome? Haters want my name beside the X like Malcolm. Everybody got a deal, I did it without one. Uh, and I'm about my business. Killing all these rappers, you would swear I had a hit list. Everyone who doubted me is asking for forgiveness. If you ain't been a part of it, at least you got to witness. Bitches, may not mean nothing to y'all. You thought I wasn't gonna know the lyrics to forever when you dropped that comment, did you, Shoe Murphy? We needed a little Drake break. It's crazy that no one's donated a, no one's dropped a big bag to trigger the Nicki Minaj only instrumental so that I can rap the Nicki Minaj verse. It's been a, it's been a hot minute since I've rapped that Nicki verse. Vince is down bad. It may not mean nothing to y'all. Nice. Uh, <laughs> thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting if you have not done it yet. Thumbs up the ting. Let me actually see if you guys uh, love me or hate me because I, I need to know. Thumbs up. 200 people watching and 160 likes. Wow, my fans hate me. Okay, let's finish this video off. And then, because... Quickstar Amway was saying they don't endorse the claims made by these people. I want to show you another video that came out decades after this original video came out. For more on this story, log on to our website. The address. Okay, it's already over. Okay. I want you to check this out now. Bill, this was uploaded six years ago. Six years ago. Remember they said they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, endorse the the comments made by Bill Britt and whoever else, right? This is a video uploaded six years ago to Amway US YouTube channel, 155,000 subscribers, called Amway Hero Awards, Bill and Peggy Britt, Leadership Amway. Let's check out some of these comments here. I want to show you guys. Big Rich 1381 says, I was in Amway in 99 when it was called Quickstar. After hearing Bill Britt speak in person, I got saved. Stop drinking, stop using girls. <laughs> Learn that your word is your bond. I am definitely better off. This person, I hope this person is trolling. Okay, so again, they didn't support it, but uh, they released a video called Hero Awards. Watch this. I believe Richard Rich and Jay are Richard Van Andel. Richard, sorry, Richard DeVos and Jay Van Andel. And then he ran into Dexter and Bertie Yeager. I have a whole stream on Dexter Yeager. I believe that the Amway business is the best business opportunity that's ever existed in the free world. Because they changed our lives. He had no problem in creating a lot of activity. America is the most special place in the world. And it's Because we the people make it that way. Bill 
talked to everybody and told them what they could do. You don't have to have any special talent. You don't have to have any special you IQ. You do is keep on keeping on and learn from your experience. We can make the dream of anybody that comes to these shores dreams come true if we the people stand up and stand together and do what we're supposed to do. People just wanted to be a part, you know? You're not working for money. What you're doing is working for happiness. You've got what it takes. Oh Let my me God. show you how. By 2004, they had an estimated downline of 1.4 million IBOs. And imagine being called a hero because you destroyed the lives of 1.4 million people. Because somebody failed to be there at the critical time. All you gotta do is keep on keeping on and learn from your experience. Oh no. Success really is how many people are better off because you live. The reason that most of us still refer to Wilbert in the present tense is because maybe we still feel his presence. Never let a non drink kill you Oh yeah, he's still here. We still insane believe that he's here because his legacy is going on. This is a eulogy that's not going to end. Continue their message, continue their teaching. His organization transcends his life. He is a great leader because he helps others to have confidence in themselves to be good How leaders. many people are better off because Bill and Peggy here? Literally, what a statement. What a backward statement. I knew that he had a lot of potential. I would not have married him if I had not seen that. I've done the best I could do and I didn't back off. And he proved to be that that I saw. I'm proud, I'm confident, and I'm bold, and I'll get the job done. That's it. Period. How many people are better off because you lived? Period. How many people are better off because you lived? Wow. What a question. Sean Munger nailed this crook in his video on the Amway Tool Scam. Yep, absolutely. Shout out Sean Munger. Amway could not close down the tool scam because Britt would have taken his his 1.4 million IBOs with him. Now check this out. Now check this out. I got one more to show you. Now check this out. There's another Hero Awards video for none other, also on Amway US's channel, uploaded six years ago, dedicated to Dexter and Bertie Yeager. Bertie and I grew up in a small mill town upstate New York. I was a shy kid in school and I was a stutter. I always had a dream of having my own business. The blinged out Jesus. I was a shy Hold on, the blinged out cross. I kid in school. They can't even. Man, these people, you know, they say don't worship false idols. These people, look at his eyes, the fucking crazy eyes. And then the iced out cross. It's like, bro. These people are such fake. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like fake disciples, fake posturing, ethical people, fake Christians, fake. Everything's fake. It's all a lie. Everything is a lie. Everything is a lie in MLM. Goo and I was a stutter. I always had a dream of having my own business. My mom told me when I was a little kid that Jaeger means you can't work for somebody Jaegers else. don't work for other people. You can't work for somebody else. So he was a doer. He wanted to accomplish things. He had big dreams. Yeah, wow, how scary that his son looks just like him. My dad and I knew his dad, but we didn't know each other. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was kind of a funny thing. Successful people are ordinary people with extraordinary desire to move in some direction. We were making $95 a week. $95 a week before taxes. At West End Brewery. And we were broke. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Our dreams were this big. And I was sick and tired of somebody else owning me. I prayed for six months that God would give me my own business. I believed all my life I was going to succeed and I should succeed. 1964. They began their Amway business 60 years ago. 60 years ago. And I believe that hard work was the answer, but I didn't realize until later in life that it took a vehicle to put that hard work behind. I didn't understand that this opportunity would change the course of our lives. I didn't take any investment. It was only $8 to get in. It was our ticket to freedom. Everybody tried to tell us how dumb we were, how immature we were. They called it crazy and we were nuts to be in the business. I was just an average guy. But I had more than the average willingness to pay the price. I had more than the average hunger. I used to think that if everything went good, then I'd decide what to do. <laughs> yeah, they got in early. And then I had to learn that you decide first, and then everything falls in place, you know? They struggled the first couple of years, and... That's true, MLM is fraud, Glenn. Dex did not teach his children to sell Amway products. He taught them to sell tools. Yep, now they have a whole uh, Jaeger group, it's called. Uh, they started putting the pieces together and figuring out what was working and what wasn't working. He was the most motivated person I think I had ever been around in my life. We thought he was nuts. Many, many new people come and they expected him to be, you know, as polished, handsome, tall. As big as he is and as well as they're doing, you know, this guy's got to be like 6'10". Well, that's, that's not the case. I'm just a small guy, but the world starts with me and my dream. Napoleon complex for real. And my energy and my ambition. He had a determination and a drive you don't see in just the average person. There's people that talk better than I do. There's people that have more education than I do. They provide a vision for what the whole team working together could do. Your group is your family. It comes from the heart. It comes from the heart of both of them. She was such a mentor and a leader to all the women that you just immediately connected with her. Jesus Christ, how many kids does this guy have? We believe the best thing we can do is to help people stand on their own two feet. They had a true uh, love and caring for people. Personhood leadership goes beyond what that person has physically touched. Empowering other people to um, use their talents and gifts and skills to do what they want to do. Look at all these people losing money. Uh, the way I was brought up, I was constantly had a lot. Imagine you can show literal footage of all the people losing money that have been scammed their by this person you're talking about while you're calling them a hero. I was constantly had a lot of dexterisms whispered into my ear. They have a whole vocabulary of success. The persistence. The perseverance. Of stamina. Never giving up. Never give up. Not letting obstacles stop you. Speaking great things. Not letting How do you make a career for decades and decades and decades and decades just saying the same thing over and over? That's the persistence. The perseverance. Of stamina. Never giving up. Never give up. Not letting ob wow, man. obstacles stop Speaking you. Speaking great things. Not let anybody distance. steal my dream. Do you believe? He would whisper, do you believe? Ugh, so creepy. Do you believe? Jesus Christ, do you believe in this scam that 99% of people guaranteed will lose money because of the design of the system where the majority of people at any given time are going to be on the bottom of the pyramid, unable to recruit more people because it's a mathematically impossible proposition? <gasps> do you believe? <laughs> Become part of your, your mindset. All the things that are just lasting principles that no matter where you apply them in life, they're going to work. So of course, we learned everything we know from Dexter. And when I say Dexter, of course, I mean Bertie too. They could see his passion for people and that, they, that he wanted for them what he had. I mean, this is the largest gathering of future millionaires you'll ever see. Again, throughout this whole five and a half minute puff piece, what did he actually do? What did he actually say? Name one thing he, one practical thing that he actually taught or did. You can't name anything because they didn't do anything. They just blew smoke up people's asses and bamboozled and schmoozled people until they gave their money up. Round direct. Dexter and Bernie Yeager. Because of you, we have had to create an award for 45 points, then 50 points, and now 55 points. People need people. People. Evil. Recently celebrated their 50th year in the business. One looks for the future. The Amway sales plan has made dreams come true. A dream gone Who's that? Who's that? And how it looks for the future. The Amway sales plan has made dreams come true. Oh, Richard DeVos. True. The whole truth. The irony of his desk with a sign that says the whole truth. And then if you look next to him, you'll see a model of a pyramid. Designed, look, with two people on the top. And then look, it's the ball, which breaks off into other balls, which break off into other balls. The whole truth. 
a dream come true that I... Netflix, reach out to me. I have a plan for an entire, like, scripted series about the history of MLM that leads, that goes all the way from the earliest time with Amway up to the modern day of showing how Ponzi schemes have lasted for so long. I'm telling you, it is... I have such a dope idea for a, for an actual like show, not a documentary, like an actual show, a historical piece, uh, I guess period piece that goes through the generations to show the evolution of MLM with like characters from one season leading into the next generation in the next season. And then there being like a multi-decade time jump to the next season that shows the, the process continuing on and on. I really, I really, uh, I really have good ideas. I've talked to CoffeeZilla about my ideas too, and uh, maybe we can make something happen in the future, but it has to happen. And I should maybe, I don't, I, I've, I've not said the idea for this show before because I don't want anyone to steal it, but then maybe I should say it so that if someone does steal it, at least it's on record that I thought of it. Um, the only successful teaching he did was to his own family where he taught them to sell MLM tools. And even then, he was only teaching them how to be financially successful, not successful in terms of being good people, which is what matters. Yep, Bush spoke at Yeager's funeral, so true. Netflix are too scared. They made a series on Amway but called it by another name. That's true. Jake, sadly, Netflix is not brave enough to do it. Thank you, HH Pro 789 Thank you for the $5 super chat. Appreciate you, big dog. Didn't know that I would ever have. Coming from where we came from, there was no way to see anywhere close to this. You know, I look at my parents as being leaders among leaders. The biggest star ever, ever in this business is Mr. Dexter Hager. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. But opportunity comes to each one of us. The information is timeless, and the stories are timeless. Our choice. Oh my God, he looks and sounds just like his dad. That's so fucking scary, man. It's so eerie. Y'all see that recent picture of Baron Trump, too? Bro, how is it that Baron Trump is like a foot taller than Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is tall. And he looks just like him when he was younger. It's so eerie. Decisions we make about each of those opportunities. Don't ever, don't ever give up on anybody. And for God's sake, don't give up on you. And that's all that we need. Somebody that provides that example of leadership, what's possible, and that it's worth it. I could never dream that I'd be where I am today. Everybody needs a dream. A man without vision. Because I've always wanted to be yeah. on the message. I had so many kids. He's like, I really need to grow this downline. Should be, you can do it. Be on the message. Should be, you can do it. Insane, insane, evil, evil. Hero award for leadership. History will tell the truth of this story. History will know. Can't make this shit up. Can't make this shit up. Wow, perfect timing. Thank you, HH Pro. Appreciate you. I want to make sure I didn't miss any, miss any donuts on the super chat. Marco, I sent you my kind of bars. Let me hear it. All right, let me see. Let me see. Tip history. Okay, Sev, thank you for the, for the Streamlabs. Limited edition. Let's do some simple edition. $500 for a pyramid. That's some ignorant bitch shit. I call that getting swindled and pimped. Should I call that getting tricked by a business that scams hella dough? Did it get cut off? Are these your original bars? I thought it was about to be Drake for a second. They were getting it crazy having that many kids, right? For real. For real, uh. So I guess y'all don't want me to do more infiltrations. I guess y'all don't want me to have the, the meta spy glasses so that I can do a new Amway infiltration video. Oh, did I say the name of the company? Whoops. Oh, it's Macklemore. Okay. Well, I didn't know Macklemore. If you had said when I was in when I was when I was in the first grade, I thought I was gay, then I would have known. Wow. My audience. Hey, everyone. Public service announcement. My audience hates me. <laughs> My audience does not want me to have two hundred dollars to buy the meta glasses so that I can do an Amway infiltration. That's the truth. I want that to be on the record out in the world. I want Dominic and Vince and Scott and Peter to have something to complain about so that they can say, Marco is just scamming his audience. He only cares about money. He's guilting his audience for not giving him $200. Also, what the, what the fuck ever happened to Dale? Y'all remember the, the debate that I did with Dale? Bro, when was that? Dale Calvert. Yes, 
eight months ago, I did the meet Dale Calvert stream. Then I did the debate with Dale Calvert seven months ago. Bro, Dale got bodied so badly. Let me see if, what he's up to. Dale Calvert. Oh, he's still uploading. The plague of fake leaders in network marketing. How do you make... You can't make this up, bro. Look at this. Dale Calvert. That profile pic, though. How do you stop procrastination? How do you make money in network marketing in 2024? Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dale. Marco the anti-MLM coward. Y'all remember this one? He really got me. Let me see if I search Marco. Okay. Hey, this is Dale Calvert. He made this like a day after I made my, uh, my uh, Meet Dale Calvert video. Honestly, I didn't know what to call this video, but figured Sissy Boy was a good clickbait title. Originally, the title was like Marco the Anti-MLM Sissy Boy, and then he changed it to Marco the Anti-MLM Coward. All right. Um, <laughs> he did, and then just getting completely ratioed in the comments. Marco gave you free publicity and exposure with over 7,000 views. To those that never heard of Dale Calvert, take it as a win. Can't wait to see this debate. Marco's going to tear you to pieces. Oh, Patrick Ong, this guy is the guy who went, give it a gup. He's also a number one Marco hater, for real. Can't wait to see what kind of nonsense Marco pulls off to entertain his anti-MLM audience. Sensational. So funny. You got got. I love it. You know what the beautiful thing is, too, about uh, Dale, oh, Dave Vaughn bodying shit? Marco never deletes posts on his video unless they're spewing nonstop hate. That's a fact. Marco dismantled you. I love, I love the, my favorite thing about the anti-MLM content that I make is that there's no risk of me being proven wrong. Like, it's a zero, I mean, there's risk. Don't get me wrong. There's not zero risk. There's definitely risk in terms of like getting sued and all that. But there's zero risk in terms of somebody like defeating me with an argument. And yet, these people love to engage in these debates with me. It's like, they're just literally setting me up to knock it out of the park every time because I'm always right because I'm just right. It's not a matter of opinion or who's the better debater. People often give me too much credit and say, oh, Marco's such a good debater. I mean, I'm arguing objective truth. It's not hard to be a good debater if you're arguing that the sky is blue. You're arguing the sky is blue with people who believe it's green. Who do you think's going to win? Thank you, HH Pro. I'm in the land of MLMs, Utah. I was in ACN when I was 18, WFG mid-20s. Glad I got away. Thank you so much, bro. Glad you got out of those, man. Fifth super on a live stream. Wow, happy anniversary. Happy, happy fifth bag anniversary. That's big. Vince is so mad at you. It's so funny. What's his name? Vince Goodrum, right? The Home Business King. Vince Goodrum. Or is his channel Home Business King? One day ago, he put out a video called Thanks for All the Birthday Wishes. Has zero views. Okay. Um, home business king. Here, the home business king. Here we go. Here we go. Let me check. Oh, 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 oh. oh, damn. He's really going in. He made another one nine hours ago. Okay, I got to watch this. Never assume what someone has. Oh, is this going to... Oh, here's another one about Always Marco. Always Marco is not always right. The king reacts to bad advice. Damn, if I just search my name, what will I find? Marco. Okay, just those two. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Hey, everyone. Home Business King. I love Vince, man. He's, he's dope. Hey, everyone. Home Business King here. This was three months ago. Look at those comments. <laughs> the only three comments. One is Glenn. Shout out to Glenn. Mark was the king of MLM videos. Your claim to be the business king is insane. Is beyond insane. You live in poverty in a mobile home. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. And I'm not trying to dig on Vince because you know I love you, but that... He bodied you. And then Patrick and Dominic Izzo, of course, the two, two snuggle buddies who are only in each other's comments. Like, of course, the only two people, Vince, the only two people you could get to comment, like, affirmatively on your video are Dominic Izzo and Patrick Ong, two people who have been shown to be complete fucking psychopaths. But let's check this out. Oh, wait, hold on. This is an hour-long video? Bro. I ain't reading all that, bruh. I'm not watching an hour long video. Oh, it's a reaction to my video exposing the myth of legitimate MLMs. Dominic did a reaction to this one too. All irrelevant. Joe, Macy, take it easy on these guys. 
Again, religious devotion is irrelevant. It's okay, my whole video was irrelevant. Uh, okay, let's... Was I not sharing the screen? Okay, yeah, here's the comments. Anyways, let's check this out. This one... Here, let's check this one out. Seven minutes. This one came out nine hours ago. Here at HomeBusinessKing.com. Before we begin, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And if I got you've already you. done that, thanks. Do that. Reason for the video is that I needed to go ahead and respond to uh, Marco making fun of where I live. Uh, I know that he was poked by Glenn in the making the statements, but you know. <laughs> the fact that I even, dude, I'm so petty. The fact that I entertain this nonsense with channels like Dominic and Vince who have 500 subscribers. And I have almost a hundred thousand. Low key, I know these motherfuckers probably think I'm bullying, but for real, I mean, <laughs> it's just so funny. I just can't resist. It's out there. It's on video, and you know, obviously, you know, Marco's trolls went and passed it on to me to get a reaction, which it seemed to work, obviously, <laughs> because I'm making this video. Uh, first off, dude, I really, it's the really like the sinister six. Scott and Peter, uh, Vince, Dominic Izzo, Dale, and uh, this Patrick Ong guy. These are like the most vocal people against me. Although this Patrick guy hasn't actually made videos about me before, I don't think. No, he did. He made the shorts. But he's not, he got to grow his platform a little bit. We got to get Patrick on the show. We got to debate Patrick because I've, I've talked to all the other guys and had my back and forths with all the other guys. I need to get Patrick on. This is where I hang my hat. What up, Specs? Wagwan. Okay. I own the property, I own the home, and I also own other property. Sev says, that's why they spend the entire time arguing that you're a grifter for expecting, accepting donations. They don't have an argument, exactly. Or Dominic Izzo being like, integrity, women are stupid. As well, okay? At no point in time should you ever uh, have an assessment of someone's wealth just simply be, uh, based upon where they live. Okay? That's such a stupid thing to say, Vince. I mean, there's living frugally and there's living below your means because you're like investing in shit and you're being smart about it. But within reason, bro, you live in a motorhome, you live in a trailer park. No disrespect. Again, I'm just saying an objective truth, bro. You you presented that info. It's not like I plucked you out of obscurity and found this information and like doxed you and exposed you and said that. You bragged about that. Okay. Uh, if that was the case, you know, you would have to get on Elon Musk. Elon Musk lives in the $50,000 house as well. Elon Musk is a fucking billionaire. It's a, ver it's a verifiable fact that he's a billionaire and he owns many businesses. The, some of the biggest, SpaceX, Tesla, X. I mean, dude, come on, Vince, you're already fumbling, bro. Well, but with that being said, what if I was poor? And Dominic is not red-pilled, he is black-pilled. Black-pill is like when the red-pill the red pill on steroids where you're like, women are all evil, I hate women, I'm just gonna do my own thing. That's Dominic. And guess what, folks? I have been poor before, you know? You know, back in the mid-90s, you know, worked at Montgomery Ward, made only five bucks an hour, worked 30 hours a week, you know? That's really not much money to live on. And fortunately, uh, network marketing was around and it allowed me to even things up as far as to bring in income is concerned. So, like I said before, uh, just because you're down and out doesn't mean that you have to be in a position where you cannot make changes. That's also one of the reasons why I was pretty successful at network marketing, because I had no choice whatsoever, you know? Uh, that's why they ask in most network marketing uh, private business receptions, what is your why? Private business reception. My why was simply because I had bills to pay. So I made it work, you know, and I worked hard. Oh, so exactly. Proving, proving all the points. Oh, you know... I was poor, I was desperate. Okay, so there you go, proving my point that no one goes out seeking to join an MLM. People are prospected and they have their desperate situations preyed upon to be duped into joining MLM. Okay, a lot of people that join these MLM network marketing businesses, they fail because they simply don't have a why. Okay, made it up. They give up, you know, plain and simple. Now, some MLMs are scams, but you know, beyond that, you gotta ask, what's your why, you know? Jesus, fuck, just talking about nothing. Daniel Graham, thank you for the first time super chat. You should investigate Online Trading Academy, $700 million settlement. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. That's crazy. You have to analyze, well, why did I fail at this business? Did I cut corners? Did I not work hard enough? Did I not make enough calls? You know? Gaslight yourself. Like I said before, I needed the money, so I did make enough calls. 
and I did sell enough product and I went door to door to sell that product. And as a result, I was successful in network marketing. The only thing between success and failure is simply how much work you do. 99% loss rate, regardless of how much work you do, but all good. You're just echoing the most basic, like weakest points, Vince. It's not even worth me responding to this. That's it. That is, the, there's no magical formula or secret or anything. There's no magical mailing system or uh, any type of special software or any special book that you can read. You, you just got to work hard, you know? But, you know, besides that, you know, Marco, how dare you go and make fun of people uh, that are in a hard up position, you know? So which is it? Are you in a hard up position or are you not? You said you're not in a hard up position. You choose to live in a mobile home on purpose and you have, and you have money, presumably. You're, you're the home business king. You own businesses, right? So that doesn't apply to you. And also, when did I, when did I pick on someone who was hard up? You know, Marco, how dare you go and make fun of people uh, that are in a hard up position? Who did I make fun of that was in a hard up position? I'm making fun of you claiming to be the home business king and living in a trailer. You know, I mean, it's sort of like an elitist attitude, which you really shouldn't have because you don't even have a house. You, you live in some sort of one bedroom apartment in some third world country, you know? <laughs> Where is he? And, you know, obviously you're not exactly Lee Iacocca or, you know, Jeff Bezos. Because yeah, I never claimed to be. I do live, actually, I have a two bedroom apartment. Spoil don't dox me. I have a two bedroom apartment. Um, and yes, I choose to live in an apartment. I don't own it. I rent it. I don't own a house. Bro, I'm 28 years old. I'm single with no children. I don't want, why would I, first of all, do you know what a house costs today? Clearly you don't because you live in a trailer, but I'm, I choose to rent so that I have the freedom of mobility to be able to go to another country for my own safety. I'm in a bit of a unique position, uh, in case you haven't heard Vince, but, um, yeah. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm. I never claimed to be like some rich guy who could afford a house and is choosing to, I couldn't afford a house if I wanted to. I couldn't afford a house in Canada. You know what that's like nowadays? Fuck, fuck a house. Because you're out there selling uh, notepads for like $20 here for diaries. I I'm sorry, Marco, the 80s called and you didn't hear it because you weren't even born. Okay, Sav, you were right. They're just gonna rag on me making money. Which is it? I'm, I'm hating on people ma who are poor, which I never did. Uh, I um, also shouldn't be talking because I'm not rich, never claimed to be. Oh, but also, Marco, you're making money off this. Okay. Just madness, bro. Imagine being gaslighting yourself this hard. Nobody uses paper notepads anymore, okay? Nobody, all right? That's why we, I use them. We have computers for, and that's why we have cell phones, you know? So I definitely get that you need the money, and you're always begging on your live streams uh, for people to <laughs> donate and everything, you know, just so you can pay your bills and stuff. Yes. But the truth of the matter is, Marco, it's time for you to head back to Canada and you know face the people that you ran from okay you see you can make fun of where i live all you would like which you know obviously you don't have a knowledge as far as to my assets are concerned but guess what at least i'm living on my property in my house in my country you got that you're the one i like how me going to another part of the world and like having this cool adventure and keeping myself alive is like uh is like being ragged on is like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go back to Canada. I love it. One that tucked tail and ran from Prime America and from World Financial Group whenever the going got tough, okay? I mean, I can literally see the streak of yellow down your back, okay? So talk all you What does that even mean? Well, you can go and sell all the little notepads and any other gimmicks and the affiliate links and stuff like that. But get this through your head, okay? At no point in time should you ever even put yourself in the position to laugh at someone that has uh, less or what you assume that has less. That's because you don't have anything, okay? You don't have your own property. You don't have, own any land, obviously. Well, pr uh, I guess we're on the same. I guess we're on the same even keel. Uh, there, Vince. Cheers with my mug from AlwaysMarkoMerch.com, which you can buy because I'm a grifter. You don't have your own house, and you're not even living in the country uh, that you generally resided in. You're in some third world country. So, all right. This has no first of all, nobody knows where I am. Nobody actually knows if I'm in a third world country. I'll just say that. Nothing really so much to do with MLM, but it has to deal with being humble in life. Be thankful for the mobile home business king. That's hilarious. But you have because, you know, people are actually worse off. You know, they don't have homes, you know, they don't have money, you know, and they don't have those opportunities. You know? What can I say uh, further <laughs> on this? Uh, and this is advice coming from someone that, you know, has been there. Has done oh, it's a way of calling me a coward. OK, I don't understand these old slang terms. Done that has been down and out. So that's all I really got to say as far as the subject is concerned. Uh, Marco. Grow up a little bit. Uh, that's all I got to say for right now. Be sure again to like and subscribe to the Home Business King. And also visit homebusinessking.com. And as always, peace and soul. Woo! 
got him! He got me. He really got me. He flamed me. He bodied me. Well, it was nice while it lasted, but I don't think I can, in good faith, in good conscience, continue my YouTube career after this evisceration by Vince. Evinceration. So, it was nice while it lasted, guys. I really appreciate you. Buy my notebook. Uh... <laughs> It's so funny, man. Everything I do and everything I don't do, they've managed to spin in their mind to be some like confirmation bias. When I was in Canada, remember Scott and Peter like two years ago were saying that by the end of the year, by the end of 2022, I would be broke and working at, uh, where did they say, Home Depot or McDonald's or something. That never happened. The channel got bigger and bigger. Dominic saying, oh, I'm just a grifter. I'm running out of money and he, I'm still doing it. I'm still going. Then something happens and they'll say, my video will go viral. They'll say, oh, well, his video only went viral because of X, Y, and Z. And then if the video has to get taken down for some reason or another, they'll say, oh, see, it's like these people just like, no matter how like undeniably successful I become, these people will always find like some excuse. Even Scott and Peter, when my channel grows or when people donate money, they'll be like, that's just proof that people are so stupid. You can't, you can't win with these people. When I... If I zigged, I should have zagged, you know? The copium is crazy. The Coca-Cola that they're drinking is, is some potent stuff. Anyways, y'all, this has been an absolute pleasure. And um, appreciate y'all. Don't do drugs. Uh, you know, just be a good person. Don't join an MLM, all that. Streamlabs link available 24-7, of course. Get this through your head, Marco, okay? You don't have your own trailer. It wasn't the president of first grade paper, okay? Slow your fucking roll. Yeah, he's literally on his Peter. Facts, empaths. What's his beef with third world countries? I mean, ironically, is if I was living in a third world country, Vince, you pointing out that I live in a third world country would be the same as what you're accusing me of doing, which is pointing out that you live in a mobile home. I know for a fact you live in a mobile home. You don't know for a fact that I live in a third world country. You also don't know what quality of life I'm living in said third world country, in this supposed third world country. Maybe I've taken my Canadian currency to this third world country and because of the currency arbitrage, I'm actually living exceptionally well in this third world country. You don't know. Maybe my quality of life in this third world country is actually even better than my quality of life was in Canada because of the currency arbitrage. You don't know. Anyways, uh, who the heck would want to live in Canada anymore anyway? Exactly. Vince wouldn't be able to afford a mobile home in Canada. Bodied. Yeah. Peace and soul. <laughs> Canada sucks. Glenn says this guy is so similar to my father. It's insane. Vince is like a younger version of my dad. The MLM tools have destroyed their brains. I mean, look, man. Time tells the truth. I live a happy life. I'm a young man with a bright future ahead. Nearly 100,000 subscribers. Amazing, adoring, beautiful people that are supporting a truly, truly altruistic and good fight against evil. Thank you so much, Melanie. And these people will s toil away on their MLM dreams in perpetuity until they are alone and destitute. I mean, that applies to both Dominic and Vince. These guys are both old enough to be my father and they're alone no children, no spouse, and just angry at the world, making videos about me. And the only time they get any attention is when I give it to them. It's fucking sad. It's pitiful. But hey, I love you guys. I love, even still, despite this, I still think me and Dominic would get along. Like, I think Vince and I would get along. Like, I would love to go link up with these guys and like go for lunch, go to the gym. Like, seriously, me and Dominic, if, if, if I swear to God, if MLM was not a thing, and we were able to just have a conversation that wasn't about, you know, that didn't talk about women because obviously that's just going to go into some incel rage from Dominic of him being like, oh, women are bitches. But if we could just talk about like, I don't know, you know, something we both enjoy, talk about some movies, talk about, I feel like we could get along, you know, I feel like we could talk about some fitness shit. I feel like we could rock it. But maybe I'm just, a, maybe that's my flaw is that I always see the good in everybody despite how like unde undeniably insane or evil they may be. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Melanie. Appreciate you. Shout out, Bill. Imagine if Annie Jacobson 
I don't know who that is. Sounds like I need to be, go be your neighbor for the sake of my budget. You gonna revisit the Brampton scammers? I don't know. Vince is gay. I know. I know that Vince is gay, Mister Almighty Cornholio. But still, uh, you could still have children and have a spouse even if you're gay. I don't know what that how that applies. Anywho, y'all, I'm done with it. I gotta go eat breakfast. I gotta go eat my third world. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go eat my third world breakfast. I gotta go eat my bugs and uh, my crickets and uh, my crickets and rice. So appreciate you guys. Don't be. Uh, don't be fooled. Thank you. I'll be back. Really appreciate it. New video access goes to the people on Patreon first, of course. So link to that in the chat and uh, get scammed by me. Buy the shirt. Buy the mug. Buy the notebook. Uh, AlwaysMarkOfMerch.com. Use the code Goons for a discount. Appreciate y'all. Peace out. We did it. We did it. Go have your gruel. Yeah, I need to go eat my gruel. Yeah. All right. Peace out, guys.